from verse 1 to verse 4, where Apostle John began to reveal to us how he came about this concept of light and truth, and how he arrived at the conclusion that the Lord Jesus Christ is God the Father, revealed to us in the human flesh as the standard of truth for us to conduct our living. So he begins from verse 1 to share that in 1 John from verse chapter 1, verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled of the word of life. Then it goes on in verse 2 to say, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life. Actually, the word is supposed to be, and showed unto you, okay? That eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifested unto us. That which we have seen, and have heard, declared unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us, and truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Then in verse 4, He now says, These things write we unto you. So we know He's talking about believers. Okay? He's writing to the saints in a particular place. Though He didn't mention the place or the location where the saints are. But He's telling us that He's writing to the saints. He said, He's writing to them that their joy may be full. Okay? And He revealed to us there that they have already declared to them these things. Okay, so let's go on to see what he said for that. So concerning that which was from the beginning, that means from Genesis, and the only one who was from the beginning is God, because his previous account in the Gospel of John explained this, that in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So he said, we who have heard of the Word, and when he used the word we here, He's talking about he and the other disciples, talking about the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and our hands have handled or touched with respect to the word of life. So, really, you mean you have seen, you have heard, and you have touched God because he told us that the word of life is God in John 1.1. 1, 1. So, if the word of God is God and you have seen it and you guys saw, you guys touched and you guys heard the word of God and you were able to touch the word of God, how did this happen and when did this happen? So he now went on further in verse 2 to now reveal to us where he said that the life, the word of God was manifest. It's from the Greek word phenero that means appear or became visible. So what that tells you is that God was not visible. That means the word of God was not visible. Okay? And that the word of God is invisible. Okay? And God became visible. And he said, we the disciples have seen with our eyes. We heard with our ears and we see with our eyes. Okay? Then he said, we bear witness. We give you an honorable report. That is what it means in the Greek. Okay, we gave you a honorable report. And then we showed you, he's talking about past tense, we showed unto you. So what that means is that they have already revealed and explained this in the past, like he did in his gospel account of John. Okay, he already revealed it in the past that God was made visible. If you remember in John chapter 1 from verse 14, where he said, and the word became flesh. Okay. He talked about that already so he's referring to these believers and he's telling them that we have already showed this to you in the past that god was made visible that the word of god became visible okay and then he said so we proclaim this to you that that eternal life which exists in the father which is in the son that means that eternal life that has no beginning or has no end of life which exists in the father not with the Father. Okay, the translators put the word with the Father. It was not with the Father, it was in the Father. Okay, and that eternal life that existed in the Father, which he called the Word of Life, is the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And that is God himself manifest in human flesh. Okay, 
Jesus Christ is God manifest in human flesh. It's from the Greek word logos, where we get the word the intelligence of God. The intelligence of God is what makes God God. That is why he said, in the beginning was the word, and the word was in God, and the word was God, not with God, in God. So his intelligence was made manifest. And then he says, and the word became flesh. That means the intelligence of God, the very intelligence of God became visible, became flesh. Because the intelligence of God was never visible at any time. Nobody ever saw God. Nobody ever knew how God related or how God is. Nobody had the full, precise, exact knowledge of God. All they had was the partial knowledge of God. You can see this in Hebrews chapter number 1 from verse 1. But John is revealing to us here that God now made himself manifest. And then we saw him. We touched him. We bear witness of you. And we bring to you an honest report. Okay? We touched him. We saw how he conducted his life. So that is why we are writing this to you so that your joy may be full. So John revealed to us that they have previously proclaimed and revealed to the believers that the everlasting life exists only in the Father who is invisible and has now become made known or revealed in the Father who became a visible human being. And who is called his son jesus christ the same person invisible as the father which is visible as jesus christ is the same person okay in the visible we call him father in the visible we call him son okay but he's the same person made known unto us all right so he said consigning this matter we have seen and made known to you so that also you may have Okay, from the Greek word echo, which means possess, lay hold, or own, or cleanse yourself to. You may have active participation with us. Remember, he says, we made known to this to you so that you will have fellowship with us. What it means is, you, this was made known to the believers so that they will have active participation or active relationship with them, the apostles. And then he says, truly our active relationship or intimacy or intercourse or relationship is in the father our relationship is in the invisible is in the father okay then he now says which is also in his son the visible jesus christ so you might ask a question why is he drawing these two perspectives to us that the our fellowship is in the father and is also in his son jesus christ because you will never know the relationship you have in the Father except you see the relationship you have in the Son, Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is the revelation of the invisible. Okay, The visible is the revelation or the explanation of the invisible. You cannot know that you have a relationship with God until you look at your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do you know your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Only when you see the relationship of Jesus as he had with his father. Okay? Remember in the Gospels account where the Lord Jesus Christ always made reference to the father. Why? Because he's setting an example for us that in relating with the invisible, we now look at how he related and conducted his life and his intimacy and relationship with the father as the standard, what he called the truth for us. Because his relationship with the Father is the revealed standard, is the truth, is the light for us. Okay, that is the light that we follow. So, with that in view, we now look at the next statement that John now said. He now said, These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. So, they wrote these things unto the brethren previously, in their Gospels account, like in the book of John, so that their joy will be full. That is what he said. And why is he saying this? To be full means they lack nothing when it comes to knowing who God is and what God is. Okay? Their joy will be full because now they know who God is and now they know what God is. They know the revealed standard of God and they know the exact representation or image of who God is and what God accepts as the truth. Because the standard has been fully explained and revealed in the Gospels account of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
what that will now mean for you is that for you not to know the standard of truth anymore will mean you have chosen to ignore the truth and live a lie that is self-deception. So this now leads to the declaration in verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now having introduced God as the word of life and he now said the word of life has been made manifest. Okay, that means has been made visible because the word of life was God himself as the father in the invisible form. Nobody has ever seen him. Nobody knows his exact and full standard. Now that the Lord Jesus Christ has appeared and has been made known to us, we now know the truth. We know the full standard of God. We know what God declares as the truth and as the standard of living. By the time we look at the Lord Jesus Christ and how he conducted his living. So the message now to us that we have heard from him is that the word of life, that means God, is light and in the word of life that means in god the father there is no confusion there is no darkness there is no obscurity okay there is no ignorance to the truth at all why because he reveals to us that this then is the message which they the disciples received from the lord jesus christ and they declared unto the brethren the lord jesus christ said that god is light and in God is no darkness at all. Okay, That means the Father is the standard of all truth. There is no confusion in the Father at all. No darkness in the Father at all. No obscurity. No any other standard apart from the standard that is in the Father. He said, so when we heard, when we read, and when we saw how the Father in human flesh, that means the Lord Jesus Christ, lived, talked, walked and conduct his daily living we have heard we have seen we have read and we have touched the standard of living so because of this he begins to reveal the various contexts for us in verse 6 to verse 10 which describes an alternative case different from the life standard of the lord jesus christ that we read and saw in the gospel's account in which the brethren were living so he now began in verse 6 to now said, If we say that we have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. What does that mean? In the case scenario or in the context or background that we say we have fellowship, we have active intercourse and relationship with him who is light, the standard of all truth. Okay. And we walk and conduct ourselves in ignorance, falsehood to the standard of God, the truth of God. That means we lie, we deceive ourselves, we live in falsehood and we produce and bear forth not the truth. That means we don't produce and bear forth the life of the Son of God. Why? Because we are living in darkness, we are conducting our life in darkness and then we are claiming that we have fellowship with him who is in light. So another word that we see for the word darkness is also our corrupt way of mind okay, or our corrupt standard of living, the human standard of living. So you don't find the human standard of living or the human way of living in God. You can't find that because God is light and the human standard way of living is not in God at all. You cannot find that. You cannot find that corrupt Paul used the word flesh in his description of the corrupt mind, okay, when writing to the brethren. So, having looked at this context that he provided to us, because now he begins to provide to us various contexts. The first context is if we say we are in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ and we walk in darkness, we are lying to ourselves. We do not possess the life of God in us. Then he went on in verse 6. And he said, but if we walk in the light, that means if we walk in the revealed standard of God or in the revealed life of God, as he, the Lord Jesus Christ, is also in the light, talking about he's in the Father, he's in the visible as well. Okay, The Father is in the visible, the visible is in the Father. Okay, The Son is in the Father, the Father is in the Son. Okay, 
So if we say that we are walking in the Son, and we are also walking in the Father, and we have fellowship with one another, okay, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Over here also, we now examine the proper translation of this verse. The word but here will now mean moreover, in the case or in the scenario or in the context or background that we conduct our living. Okay, Remember the word walk is to conduct our living in the standard of the Lord Jesus Christ, the light. Like he, the Lord Jesus Christ, is in the light, the Father. And proves that we have fellowship with one another. That is, we have active relationship of intercourse, of sharing in truth with the Lord Jesus Christ, which is, we have active sharing, understanding that the blood, that means the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's visible form, cleansed us from the whole sin, Hamatai. So he's not saying that because we are in fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ, then the blood of the, the Lord Jesus Christ is now cleaning us from sin. No, the word cleansed there is a past tense. It's a verb that is dealt with in the past tense. That means the Lord Jesus Christ cleansed us. That means what we are proving or what we are declaring in our message whenever we walk in the light is that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that means the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, cleaned us from all the nature of sin. It cleaned us from the hamatai of sin. That is what we are proclaiming. So in our walk in the light, we are proclaiming that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has cleansed us from the nature of sin. That is the testimony that we are putting out there. We are bearing forth this declaration that the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ cleaned us from all sin. So the King James now say cleans, like it's something that is happening. No, it is actually a past tense verb that has happened. That means it's an action that has already happened in the past. So it's not supposed to be cleansed us. It's that the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleaned us, not cleans. It's cleaned us from all sin. Okay. So translators put the word cleans. It's not supposed to be cleans. It's supposed to be cleaned. He cleaned us from all hamatai, from all the nature of sin. That is what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us. So, having said that the Lord Jesus Christ has cleaned us from all sin, he now went on for that to bring another context again because he's presenting to us various contexts. First context, if we say that we have fellowship with him, that means if we are in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, this is the conscious being. 